In this video, I'm going to use a real Cisco demonstration lab to show you how to configure passive interface on Cisco routers and why you need to even configure passive interface. What are the advantages of configuring passive interface? So let's go into this router, DIST, and I'm going to issue the command show IP protocols and you can see it is routing for networks all three of them two links and one loopback and you can look at what are the ips of these interfaces show ip int brief 192.168.4.4 is a loopback interface but if you notice here there is no neighbor connected to this loopback interface but OSPF process is still going to send and receive OSPF packets in this loopback interface, which is going to consume bandwidth and CPU and memory resources in this route. So think about if you have hundreds of loopback interfaces and other interfaces, which doesn't have any other neighbor associated to that is sending and receiving OSPF packet which is going to consume considerable amount of bandwidth and resources from the router. In the case of DIST router, we have only one interface that needs to be configured as a passive interface. Other two should be active interfaces. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to router OSPF1 and I'm going to go to that specific interface and say it is a passive interface. To do that, passive interface and you define the interface number. In this case, we are going to say loopback zero. So now OSPF is going to suppress all the OSPF packets from this loopback interface. So let's go and check IP protocols. And you can see passive interface is loopback zero. We already have configured these interfaces into the routing process. If you look at show run and go to the OSPF process, you already put this statement into the OSPF process. But when you configure this interface as a passive interface, it's going to remove that interface from sending and receiving OSPF packets. So I'm going to use another method in this router to do the same thing based on the situation and number of interfaces on this router. When it comes to VR router, you can see these four loopback interfaces does not have any neighbor attached to it, including loopback zero. So what we are going to do is instead of going to each interface and configuring it as a passive interface so instead of putting a statement for each loopback interface to make them as passive interface i'm going to configure it in a different way and i'm going to go to this router and issue the command show ip protocols and you can see it is routing for two networks that is how we have put into the network statement show run and you can see we put in only two statements as network statements and we are redistributing all the connected routes so now i'm going to go to this router router ospf1 and i'm going to put a command passive interface default that means every single interface is considered as passive. That means all the interfaces in this router become as passive and it will lose the neighbor relationship with this router momentarily until you configure this interface. So I'm going to go to HQ2 and look at OSPF neighbor, show IP OSPF neighbor, and you can see this is 555 let's go to the OSPF process 
and find out router ID, which is 555. So it has a relationship with 555. And I'm going to go to BR and make passive interface default. That means all interfaces are now passive. So now let's go to SQ2 and look at the neighbor. Right now it is waiting for the dead timer to expire. Now you see dead timer expired and this neighbor has been removed from the neighbor relationship table. So now I'm going to go to BR and say no passive interface Ethernet 0 slash 0. This interface is going to be excluded from passive interface. And as soon as you do that, you see it establishes the neighbor relationship with HQ2. And you see it is showing up in its neighbor table. And also go to look at the output of show IP protocols and you can see all these interfaces are now passive except ETH00. So this is how you use passive interface in the Cisco environment to cut down unwanted OSPF communication on interfaces where it is not needed. Hope this video is helpful for you to understand the concept of passive interface. If you appreciate the content and you like the content, give me a thumbs up. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notification for my future video updates.